Welcome to Engineer Campus, a place where I help you to get your idea into a product. And today we will talk about embodiment design, the original product development. It's the thing that probably uh, the most people think about when it actually goes about product development. It is the core of the 10 steps. And at the same time, it's also very hard to uh, give advice about this because um, with so many different products that there are, um, there's hard to find uh, one exactly path that you can take through it. But let's go back a second. Where do we go and what have we done already? So we know the goal of the product. We have thought about what we want to do and um, we, we discovered exactly what kind of plan we have. Um, it is shaped according to the needs of the market because after going through our ideation we went out and looked at competition, what kind of other products are on the market. We know um, that our goal is accurately framed because we adapted our product to exactly the niche where we wanted to have. And its function are selected for optimal quality, so we go through went to the functional analysis and then in the part solutions we got um, the best solutions that we can hardly uh, imagine that we can find, could find out. And our design is prepared to guide development. So we know exactly from the um, combined solution how our product at the end might look like and now it's basically we have these two endpoints. Now we just have to um, put it in the line. We have our um, rails left and right from the requirement list, and now it's just about doing the work. Building the program, this is important to solve it in every detail. So all c technical questions have to be answered. The product has to be planned inside out. And not only do problems have to be solved, but they also need to be reasonable and alternatives must be requested. So you need to have a reason for what you are doing. Keep documenting the process to not get overwhelmed and to lose overview over the parts. Where do you start? You go from macro to micro. That means you start at the very rough and then go into detail further and further. First you think about connecting the solutions for the main function. You have um, your main functions and also described in the requirement list uh, what actually a product is about. You start with this and connect them properly. Then if this fits together, you solve the finer details uh, one step smaller. If the main mechanism works, you develop the accessory functions. And then you fine tune the housing and other aspects of the surrounding function. So you go from the most important to the least important and from the rough to the fine. And how this exact, exactly is done totally depends on your product. Doing all this I can totally recommend using a computer aided design program. Um, using a CAD program helps a lot to see if parts fit together. It is possible to test changes so you can simply edit um, the sizes of your product and if you do any error or anything doesn't work out you can go simply back to the old files and nothing bad happened. The files can later be used to make the engineering drawings and, or can be sent to a factory for production as well. And the files can also be used for simulation of stresses and for renderings to produce photorealistic pictures of the product which is also good for later for advertising your product. When you do your construction, you uh, need to calculate weak spots. You have to find out uh, which parts of the product might be prone to failure. This is um, which parts might have to endure stress of chemicals or temperature of forces. You need to find out what the expected limits are and then adapt these parts to the climate. Just think for example um, a step from a bus it has to be able to take the load of uh, a lot of people that step on it and for the maximum force it can be that like 10 people have to be able to stand on this step on from the bus without breaking 
And what also needs to be calculated is that some parts might be prone to wear through normal operation and it's necessary to calculate their lifetime, for example, bearings. Or, for example, with a step, it can be that the step is corroding or that the step might deform during use and it has to be used by, um, have to calculate how many people will use a bus and how many people can step on the step before it breaks and you have to <clears throat> design the step that it breaks uh, way, way out of its expected lifetime. Mm. While thinking about the lifetime of the product, a little bit earlier it's important to think about the production itself. You have to keep in mind that the product has to be manufactured and assembled. So keep the product easy to build and reduce uh, possible errors during production. The easier it is to build, the uh, easier it is to find someone that can build it without making errors. And easy assembly also reduces costs a lot. You don't need specialized uh, personnel to build it and you don't need supervisors or uh, a lot of quality insurance. You should limit the manufacturing methods. So when you have several different manufacturing steps, it might require shipping the part to another factory. Just for example, you first uh, use a milling plant and just mill all the parts and then you need to weld it and then you also need to screw things together and then you need to heat treat it and add plastic parts and then you have to treat it again and paint it. So if you have too many different steps, unnecessary steps, then it can get very costly and also very hassle to actually produce a part. So make sure that it's actually necessary to do this. Yeah, be creative, plan ahead. It's hard to give an easy advice to this plan that fits all possible products. And here it is at you to put in the work and get things done. Uh, like a programmer has to write the code, it's now on you to do design. So really you have to put in the work now and try to find the best way for your product. And the best advice is to be creative. Imagine the product and document each part and plan ahead for every detail that is needed to make it alive. And the next two steps will be then documentation, documenting the work that you have done. And I hope you see you then. Goodbye.